So, who makes the best breakfast? Is it the English or is it the North Africans? Well, today I'm going to find out because I'm going to be trying popular breakfast from both places to see who's best. So let's start off first with the English breakfast. For the English breakfast, I decided to go to a place called Browns, located on the hedgerow. It is set in this pretty grand and imposing building with large windows and even has a flower arrangement around the entrance. So pretty fancy. It's got great reviews on Google and TripAdvisor, so let's head in and check it out. The inside of this place is pretty modern and stylish with, I would say, historic features. It kind of reminds me of maybe the 1920s with the type of seating they have and art deco styling of some of the decor, but a pretty nice place to be. It is a little fancy in here though, a little more upmarket than your standard pub or bar that I usually go to. The menu is pretty decent with the usual breakfast items, but only a bit more fancy. I mean, they even have lobster benedict on here, which I've definitely not seen at any of the other places I've been to before. But we're not here for that, we're here for the traditional breakfast right at the top of the menu. Plus the customary pot of tea, which as you can see has been a little bit fancified. The tea came with a small strainer as it was a loose leaf tea rather than in a tea bag like you would get at most of the places. So it actually becomes a bit of an experience to make the tea which I quite enjoyed. I've never had a loose leaf tea before so this was going to be the first and I wanted to see how it would compare with a regular tea made from just a tea bag. And it was pretty good, a little bit more of a subtle flavour but very nice. The little biscuit that comes with the tea was pretty good too, I even dipped it in the tea. Now when the breakfast came out I have to admit it looked really good, all the usual items were there and the presentation of it was great and I could not wait to tuck in and try everything out. So with this breakfast you get two pretty big sausages that have some nice golden brown colour on them, two fried eggs that are fried nicely and look great, especially the colour of the yolks which should be nice and runny, I can't wait to test that out. Two of the biggest mushrooms I've ever seen on a breakfast, have a look at these, I mean have you ever seen bigger mushrooms than these on a breakfast? I don't think I have. You get two rashes of bacon which actually look small next to the mushrooms but they do have some nice grill marks on them. A huge slice of black pudding which I do like the colour of as well. A grilled tomato with, well some nice grill marks on them. A couple of slices of toast with a massive knob of butter on top and a pot of baked beans in the middle. What a nice looking breakfast, let's dig in. I'm going to start off here with the sausages and these were good sized ones too. They were thick and heavy and had these nice grill marks on them so let's go in for a taste. They were not bad, I think you could tell there was a high meat content in them but I think these may have been done in the oven and then grilled but I could be mistaken. They didn't quite taste like fried ones to me which I prefer but nevertheless decent. Next up these giant mushrooms, these were huge and even felt meaty putting my fork into it. They had a really dark brown colour and I really wanted to see how these would taste so let's go in for a bite. They were pretty good, you got the usual soft and squidgy mushroom texture but only a lot more of it, in fact they may have been even more squidgy than regular ones, so not bad mushrooms. Now for the bacon, and how good do these look? They've got a good combination of meat and fat and have delicious grill marks on them and I can't wait to see what these are going to be like, so let's try them out. A great bit of bacon, it was salty and meaty and fatty and you could taste the grill flavour too which was nice, I like this bacon. I just have to test out the eggs next and the yolks were perfect. Nice and runny and have you ever seen more yellow yolks than these? They're so yellow they're orange. These are going to be good for dipping things in for sure. Now for the black pudding. It's a pretty big slice here so let's cut off a small piece to try out. Here it goes. It's pretty good. You get a nice cakey texture and I think black pudding is a good vessel for taking on other flavours so it should be good to have with the other items. Onto the baked beans. I like the thickness of the sauce here and the texture looks good too. So let's go in for a taste of these. They were decent. I think maybe slightly lacking flavour so maybe they're using low sugar ones here but not bad. Now for the toast which I think I may have over buttered but that's okay because it should taste extra buttery. 
I wasn't that big a fan of the toast as it had a bit of a burnt taste to it which I think must come from them cooking it on the grill to get the grill marks. So for the combo bite which is what it's all about with a full English and I hear I've got sausage, black pudding, tomato, mushroom and egg. Let's dip it in the beans for good measure and take a bite. This was a pretty decent full English. There were parts I liked and parts I didn't but overall pretty good. So that was a nice English breakfast. What a great start to the day. The total cost of that meal was 14 pounds and 95 pence. Let's move on next to the North African breakfast. For the North African breakfast, I decided to go to a place called Cozy Club, situated on Albion Street. It's located on the upper level of this building complex and it looks like you get some good views of the street from up there. So let's head in and check it out. The inside of this place is probably one of the most extravagant entrances I've ever seen. I mean, have a look at all the paintings and colours on the wall. It really hits you in the face as soon as you walk in, but let's head up the stairs and see what it's like up there. The staircase is filled with just as much artwork as the entrance. I wonder what they're all of. If anybody recognises any of them, comment what they are below. The decor of the upstairs is just as extravagant and kind of has a maybe 1930s feel to it. There's loads of seating available and in fact this place is a lot bigger than it looks from the outside. There's probably room for over a hundred people in here. I do like the lighting though, it seems everywhere has upped their lighting game and if you want a fancy restaurant now you have to have good lights, which they do here. The menu is a decent size with quite a few breakfast options to choose from and you can add extra ones too if you want to. In fact, the drink section is just as big as the food section so you're not going to be short on drinks here. So the item that I'm going for on the menu is called shakshuka and I'll explain a bit more about it when it arrives. I also got a coffee to have with my breakfast because, well, I fancied a bit of a change to the usual tea and it came with their own branded sugar which I thought was a nice touch so I just had to add it in and the coffee was pretty good. So this is the North African breakfast of Shatshuka. There's a bit of a debate about exactly where it originates but a lot of sources say it's Tunisia. Now this breakfast isn't just eaten in North Africa, it's actually eaten in a lot more places than you think such as the Middle East and the Mediterranean too. So widely eaten breakfast. It usually consists of eggs that are poached in a tomato and pepper sauce but because it's eaten in a lot of places there are many variations as to what's in it. So for this one it's got crispy chickpeas, the tomato and red pepper sauce, the eggs, Greek yogurt and feta cheese with a couple of slices of toast on the side. I have to say it looks pretty good. Let's go for a taste and see what it's like. I think I'm going to try some of the sauce first with the chickpeas. I have to say it tasted really delicious. I really liked it. You get a rich tomato flavour with a hint of spice and the crispy chickpeas just add that crunchy texture that makes it a great bite of food. I'm pleasantly surprised by this. Let's try out, I think this is the egg. Actually, it's not, it's the Greek yogurt, but I think it might be just as good. It's nice and thick and it should go well with the tomato and chickpeas. So let's give it a taste. Again, it was pretty delicious. The creamy, slightly tart and sour yogurt contrasted well with the rich tomato flavor and cooled down the spice. Let's try out some of the feta cheese, which was actually an extra that I added on. But we're not going to eat it on its own, we're going to mix it in with the lovely sauce. Here it goes. Really nice again. The slightly salty feta combines well with the richness of the tomato sauce. Now I just have to cut into one of these eggs as I haven't tried one so far. And I think the yolk should be nice and runny. And it was. I can't wait to try the egg with the sauce and chickpeas and everything together as I think it will be an epic bite. So let's just go for it. Really nice again, the creamy yolk mixes in with the tartness of the yogurt, the salty feta cheese with the rich tomato sauce and the chickpeas just add that crunch, so it's not just a soft bite. I can't fault it so far, but there's one thing left to do and that's to dip the toast in it and see what that's like. There's no butter with the toast, but I'm not sure if you need it with the yogurt and cheese already in there. So let's just go in for a bite of this. 
The combinations of the textures here is pretty good with the softer eggs and sauce and then the crunchy chickpeas and toast. It mixes together well and I just have to get a combo bite here with everything on it. So the soft egg, some of the creamy Greek yogurt, the rich tomato and pepper sauce and the crunchy chickpeas in it as well. And then some of the salty feta cheese. I don't know how I'm going to get this into my mouth but let's just give it a go. And the best thing about having a bit of bread or toast with your meal is to mop up the bits at the end. What an amazing North African breakfast. It's the first time I've ever had that dish and I really enjoyed it. So the total cost of that meal was £14.55. So which was the better breakfast? Comment down below which one you preferred. I think for me it's a pretty tough decision. The North African breakfast was definitely more flavourful but you did get more variety in the English breakfast. I think for me on this particular occasion I'm going to have to give it to the North African breakfast. Okay if you like breakfast click on the thumbs up icon below and click on subscribe to come along for the next food journey and I'll see you in the next one.